everybody, my name is Krista and I am the owner and teacher here at Riverside Art Studio in New Jersey. I have set up a little video today because sadly I am all alone in my studio. None of my friends are here today and I thought since we need to be closed and my friends can't come in and have art class with me here, I would make some videos so that I could post them and then my friends could do art class along with me at home. So today what we're gonna be making is called a watercolor resist. And this is an example of one that I made earlier. And you can see I was inspired by these flowers over here um, that I found in my yard. I'm gonna be going through with you guys today exactly how to create this project. We're gonna go be going through the materials and the steps and then you guys can follow along and do this at home. So a little bit about what inspired this project is I was taking a walk with my dog Frankie a couple days ago and it was a super gray, rainy spring day. Here in New Jersey, all of the spring flowers are popping up. We also get a lot of gray, rainy days. So I was walking around and it was this kind of gloomy day and I really started to notice all these beautiful flowers that were popping up. And I was noticing the contrast of the gray, rainy weather against these bright, beautiful flowers that were popping up everywhere. And I thought I wanted to make a picture about that because I thought just the contrast between the light and the dark was really interesting. So I thought that I'd show you guys how to do it in case you wanna explore this yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the supplies that we're gonna be using today. Now, the first thing I have here is a piece of watercolor paper. It's like thick paper. If you don't have watercolor paper, you can use cardstock or construction paper. It's just the thicker, the better. And you can see here that I've taped off the edges of my paper. When you do that, you end up, when you're painting with watercolors, you end up with this nice frame around your picture, which just makes things look a lot more finished. So this isn't mandatory, but if you have some masking tape around, if you tape off the edges or ask mom and dad to tape them for you, it just makes things look a little bit nicer. All right, so here's my paper. I also have oil pastels, and I'm gonna be using these super cool neon Crayola oil pastels today. I just love the bright colors of these, but you can use any kind of oil pastels. You can also use crayons, that works as well. So, in addition to my oil pastels, I also have some liquid watercolors. I use these all the time. Um, these are colorations. You can use any kind of liquid watercolors. If you don't have liquid watercolors, you can use the watercolors that come in the pan. You're just gonna use the black. If you don't have that, you can use food coloring mixed in with water. And if you don't have that, this is kind of a neat trick. If you have any old markers, or even new markers that you don't mind kind of using up, if you take a cup of water, put a black marker inside, let it sit for a little while. The color is gonna seep into here and it's essentially the same thing as this. So those are all options. Now, I am making up kits for my local friends that can't come in for their art lessons. So those kids that, are, that have the kits, you guys are gonna have this little cup of black liquid watercolor. And what we're gonna do is, you might wanna ask mom or dad to do this because I don't want you to spill it everywhere, but you have to kind of pry the top off of this cup. So I'm just gonna show you, you just have to kind of get your nails under there and just kind of peel that top off so it doesn't go everywhere. Now I have a cup of water with a paintbrush. I'm going to take my liquid watercolors and I'm just going to pour this right in. That's so cool. Stir it up a little bit because what we're gonna be doing for our background is we want it to look like this sort of gray gloomy color, not black so that's why I mixed it in with a little bit of water if I took it straight out of here it would be like very very dark all right so now I think I have everything that I need over here I have a little bouquet of for Cynthia these grow in my yard I cut some branches off and brought them in so that I can look at them if you have flowers in your yard or if you have flowers uh, near your house if you have like open spaces with some wildflowers that you that you can pick it's really good to have something to actually look at because we're also gonna be talking a little bit about observational drawing. Observational drawing is just drawing things that you are looking at and it really helps you to become a better artist to look at things and really try to draw them the way that you see them. So that's what I'm gonna be trying to do. You guys can do the same thing or you could find pictures, uh, you could take pictures with 
your mom or your dad's phone and print them out in your printer. You could look for pictures on your computer and print them out and look at those as well. And then of course, if you can't do any of that, we could always just try to draw from our own memory, which is fine too. But if you want to practice your observational drawing, you really need something to look at. Okay, so that's why I have this bouquet here. I'm not going to be drawing it exactly how it looks like in the vase because I kind of want it to look like it's sort of outside. So I'm just going to be changing it a little bit because I'm an artist and I'm allowed to do that. So. Let's get started. Okay, what I'm going to do first is I'm gonna start by drawing my flower blossoms. That's the way I always usually like to start drawing flowers. I draw the blossoms first, and then I draw in the stems and leaves if there are some, but you can really do it however you like. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at these. I'm gonna take one of these out, I think, and show it to you guys. Okay, so if you look here, you can see these four Cynthia, obviously, what, what color are they? yellow and if you look a little bit closer you can see they are yellow but they have um, a little bit of green in the center there also on the stems where they attach to the branch and they are yellow but they're almost a little bit of a golden yellow so those are all things that I'm observing by looking at them so I'm gonna start to make my blossoms oh and I also noticed how many petals? How many petals on each for Cynthia blossom? So it's usually four. And then every once in a while you'll get one with five, like this guy over here. Okay, and this is something I never even realized until I actually took a second and looked at them. So I'm going to start making my for Cynthia blossoms using, I'm gonna start with yellow, and I'm going to be making kind of like like a plus, because I'm gonna make four petals, all right? And now to make it look a little bit more realistic, I'm just gonna round those petals off a little bit. Okay, kind of like that. Now I'm gonna make them look a bit more golden by adding in a little bit of orange, because if you look here, this is like a super yellowy, almost like a greenish yellow, and I wanna kinda of warm it up a little bit. So I'm gonna put like a little bit of this orange in the center. Okay, to kinda of warm it up a little bit. Then I'm going to take some green and I'm gonna make that little green dot in the center. Just like that. Now I'm gonna keep doing this because if you look at these branches, the flowers go down in a line. So I'm just gonna be making a line of for Cynthia blossoms. All right, so there's my X's that I'm starting with. I'm gonna go in and round them off. And then I'm gonna add in those little orange parts. And then my little green dot in the center. Now, the next part I'm gonna be doing is the stem. Now, technically, the stem on these guys are brown, but I really wanted this painting to be really bright when it came to the flowers. So I'm actually gonna take my artistic license and I'm gonna change it to green. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be making a line that connects all of these flowers because the stems on these for Cynthia's are straight. Now, if you're using different kinds of flowers, of course, this is gonna look a little bit different, but the same thing applies. I want you to actually really look at the flowers, look at the shapes, look at the colors, look at the stems. Your stems might be more wavy or you might have leaves on your stems. So again, you can do this with any kind of flower, but I still want you to really look at it and observe what you see. So I'm using a darker green for this, and I'm just gonna make a straight line I'm gonna start 
at the top here. So this flower is going to be the very top and I'm just gonna continue it down. Now if I run into a petal, I'm just gonna stop and I'm going to imagine that that petal is in front of my stem. I'm gonna show you what I mean here. Okay, so see when I got down to here, I just stopped and then I started up again here and I went all the way down to the bottom of my paper. Now, this for Cynthia is looking a bit sparse, so I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna add a few more blossoms. So again, I'm going back and making that little X. These are gonna be a little bit smaller and I'm just filling in the spaces. And then I'm gonna go back in and do all those same things, rounding off the, the petals a bit. Adding a little bit of that orange just to warm it up. And making that little green dot in the center. Now one thing I want you to remember when you're working is you want to really press kind of hard with your oil pastel. You don't want to press so hard that you break it, but you want to press hard enough so that you get a nice bright color because this is going to really help your drawing to resist the watercolor. Okay, so you can see what I have going on here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to just add some more all the way across and then I'm going to show you the next step. Okay, so now that I have finished my drawing I'm ready for the coolest part so here is my finished drawing the one thing that I'm going to do is if you have any little crumbly bits from the oil pastels you can just blow them away you don't want to rub with your hand because you can smudge these and I don't want you to mess up your beautiful picture so I'm just gonna blow away as many of these as I can give a little shake and then I'm ready to add my background. So you can see here this background, we have this beautiful sort of gray color, which really makes that yellow of the Forsynthia's pop. So here I have my black watercolor mixed with a little bit of water, and you can use any kind of paintbrush, but a softer one works best for this. So I'm going to take this, I'm gonna give this a little bit of a dab so that it's not too drippy, and I'm gonna paint right over my drawing and right up to the tape and if you go over the tape a little bit that's fine okay now I'm gonna try to pick this up without it dripping too much but if it drips it's okay because I'm just gonna go over it but you can start to see how you can still see those flowers through there so that's part of the reason why we're drawing with the oil pastels and pressing a little bit hard because if you press super lightly it won't resist the watercolor paint as well so I am just spreading this all around. Okay, and then we are all done. So we just need to let this sit to dry for a little while. It usually takes more like 15 minutes to dry. If you're getting impatient, you can use a paper towel to blot it. Um, you can do this also if you have any puddles that you don't want. What I do is just crumple up a paper towel and just kind of press. Don't rub, press. And that kind of sucks up some of those puddles. You might like the way the puddles look. Sometimes I, I really like the way that looks. So it's really up to you. But if you do a little bit of blotting, um, this will take a little bit less time to dry. I'm also gonna go over the tape. Okay, that will also lighten it up a bit. So if you do your blotting and it's a little bit too light, then you can always go back in and just add a little bit more color. Okay, so now I'm just gonna leave this here and let it dry. Okay, so while my painting is drying, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about darkness and lightness. When I was taking my walk the other day, the thing that really made me 
notice the bright beautiful flowers was the gray gloomy day. The contrast between the two really called my attention to how beautiful the flowers were, which I hadn't really noticed before. So sometimes you need that darkness in order to appreciate the lightness or the brightness of something. I can also think about that during this time right now because there is a lot of darkness in that I can't have my friends at my art studio right now and that makes me really sad. But in contrast with that sadness, I've also been creating a lot more of my own artwork at home because I don't have anything to, I don't have anything to uh, unleash my creativity into. Usually I'm being super creative every day, coming up with art projects and running art birthday parties. And now I have nowhere to put my creativity. So I've been making more artwork at home. So that's like a bright spot. Another thing is I have been spending more time with my daughter because she's home from school. So sometimes we need some of those dark moments in order to appreciate the brighter ones. So that's just something that this art project made me think of and I thought that I would share with all of you. Also, um, this can be explored in lots of different ways. I chose flowers in order to explore this theme, but there's lots of other subjects that you can do with darkness and lightness. Can you guys think of any other things that are really, really bright in contrast with something that's really, really dark? I can give you some ideas if you are looking for some suggestions. One thing that immediately popped into my head was stars at night. So the moon and the stars and the planets, you can draw those stars with your oil pastels and do this gray or black background to really make them shine. Another thing I was thinking of was rainbows. All right, whenever we have a rainbow, we have some rain. So if you could draw a bright, beautiful rainbow, and then you can use your gray paint in the background to show like the cloudy, rainy sky. And then that, that darkness really makes the rainbow pop. So those are all different ways that we can explore this. So for those of you that have kits, I am going to be giving you uh, two pieces of paper. So if you finish your flowers and wanted to do a second project with another idea, you could totally do that or just get out more paper and you could do this <laughs> all day long. If you come up with some really good ideas, I would love to see them, so make sure you send them to me. That being said, my painting is just about dry, so I'm ready to take the tape off. Now, if you have a hard time with this, ask mom or dad to help you. All you really have to do is just find your tape, and we're going to peel it off. And the way you wanna do it is you kind of wanna just hold your paper down with one hand and with the other hand, you're going to pull your tape off. And it really helps if you do this at an angle. Just so you guys can see here. So I'm just, I'm keeping this hand close to the tape. I'm not pulling it off like this. I'm pulling it off this way. This will keep the paper from ripping. But if some of the paper rips, it's okay. It's not the end of the world because you won't really notice it if a little bit of it comes off with, with the tape, as long as it's still there, it'll just look like, you know, white paper. All right, so now I'm getting to the corner, so I'm going to peel off that little corner there. And then I'm just gonna keep going. Okay, and then I'm just gonna keep on peeling this off. Okay, and there we have it all finished. So thank you guys so much for spending this time with me. Again, for all of my students, I miss you. I hope you guys are all doing well. And I will be back again next week with another project. So I will see you then. Okay.